guys, my name is Siti Nurofifa. So today, I'm going to talk about the contemporary issue about leadership. So, what do you know about leadership? Hmm. Leadership is the art of motivating a group of individuals to act toward a common goal. Leadership go beyond management tasks. A leader will not only manage existing resources, but also involve in communicating, inspiring, and supervising. So, a leader born or made? Some people seem to naturally have a higher level of leadership than others. Anyone can learn to be a leader by improving certain skills. History is full of people who having no leadership experience but they have the, they have qualities and characteristics that help them involve into these leadership roles. Do you know Steve Jobs? He is a famous example of someone who learned how to lead even though he was not born as a natural leader. Now, let's look into the types of leadership style. The first one is autocratic style. An autocratic leader believes that he or she is the smartest person on the table and knows more than anyone else. And the leader will make all the decisions by their own. Second, the authoritative style. An authoritative leadership style is a sign of confident leaders who pave the way and set expectations while attracting and inspiring their followers. The third one is pack setting style. Do as I do. This is a phrase that's, that best describes leaders who use this style. Pack setters, they set the bar high and they will push their team member hard and fast to finish the line. And the fourth one is democratic styles. Leader asks for employees' opinion before they're making the final decision. This style make people do what the leader want them to do, but of course, in the way that they want to do it. And the fifth is coaching style. It's a leader who train people to look for talent to develop. And the sixth is affiliative style. This is the leader who practices this style is attentive and support the emotional needs of their employees. And the last one is the lazy fairy style. This is the opposite of autocratic style. This style, leaders seem to trust their employees and let them do their work with less amount of supervision. Now, let's look at the seven biggest problems with leadership today. Leadership is a skill that anyone can learn. By avoiding these seven common leadership issues, we can lead our team and company to greatness. In recent times, issues regarding ethical leadership have often been addressed. Not only that, nowadays, most leaders are also required to have not only high IQ, but also EQ. So let's look into the first issue, which is ethical leadership. In the past, the main purpose of leadership was to increase productivity and profitability. However, in the 21st century, this view is slowly diminishing as more organizational development and human resources experts assert that leaders also have a responsibility to maintain moral and ethical standards. Good leadership then not only refers to efficiency, but also the ethics of changing organization and people's lives. Now, let's look at the elements of being an ethical leader. Firstly, be the example. As a leader, it is important to demonstrate a good example for employees. Employees will usually respect and emulate their ethical leaders. Secondly, champion of ethical importance. As an ethical leader, 
it is important to teach peers about ethics, especially in cases where they are facing ethical issues at work. Lastly, communicate. A successful ethical leaders, they tend to be a good communicator. It is the duty of ethical leaders to communicate with each team member and allow for open discussion, as some people may have questions and concerns that need to be addressed. Ethical leaders can help create a positive environment with productive relationship at these three levels, which is individual, teams, and organization. So let's see at the outcomes. First, influence individual well-being. An ethical leader who is an example can influence others to do the same. Generally, people are influenced by the interaction that occurs around them. Next, boost up the energy of the team. Usually, the spirit is higher at work when people get along. And the last one, maintain the organization help. When people can respect one another and appreciate the opinion of others, it can help create a productive work environment. And another issue in leadership is leader with emotional intelligence. Over the past few years, emotional intelligence EQ has been a hot topic, especially in the workplace. Hard skills alone are not enough to form strong leaders. With Research showing that those with high EQ are more self-aware, motivated, and empathic, which is an important trait for successful management. According to the exponent of emotional intelligence, a person's emotion structure determines his or her professional success. They believe that EQ is the most important determinant of professional and personal success in life. It is increasingly recognized that IQ contributes only about 20% of one's success in life. The other 80% depends on the personal emotion intelligence. EQ can play a role in achieving success in many areas of professional life and can help improve productivity, accelerate adaptation, develop leadership skill, and stimulate creativity. So this is the benefit of using EQ in leadership. First, create a positive atmosphere. When a leader is able to control his or her emotion and the emotion of others, they are more likely to create a positive atmosphere in the organization. The second one, mindfulness is critical to a successful organization. Utilizing EQ continues to help leaders trust their gut instinct when one of their employees is not engaged on their work. By practicing this awareness in meetings and throughout the day with employees, it will enhance not only their productivity but also outcomes. And the third one, motivate employees. With the positive atmosphere that EQ brings to the workplace, employees can be more, be more involved in their roles. Empathy is critical to successful organization. A leader who excels in social awareness and practices empathy will strive to understand their employees' feeling and perspective, which is enable them to collaborate and communicate more effectively. And the last benefit of using EQ is create open and honest communication. Leaders with a high EQ have better social skills, so this means the leader can proactively communicate through any issues and not only open to hearing good news but also the challenging news. So, what can I conclude is, everyone can be a leader, but not everyone can be a good leader. If it is better if someone learn first on how to be a leader and ask for advice from experienced leader before leading a group or organization. This is because being a leader is a great responsibility for someone and a leader has the power to influence his or her people either to become more positive or otherwise. Organizing their responsibility allows leaders to change their attitude towards better and learn to increase knowledge and master various skills to provide good example to employees. Thank you.